Hey everyone! Today we're going to sew the Carlotta Commuter from Aura Rosa Patterns. Look how cute she is! I love it! I used a custom magnet snap on this front pocket here. There's also a back snap pocket and the signature Aura Rosa phone pocket and handles. I used the ColourPop strap from Lavender and Twine to finish this off. Inside we've got the signature um, panels with the zipper pocket on one side that's a combo slip pocket and also just the single slip pocket on the other side. There's lots of room in this even my chunky i7 with that case fits in here and there's lots more room in there still okay so i think that's about everything if we have any questions let me know let's get started sewing the carlotta commuter all right friends let's go ahead and start with the strap the handles the d-ring connectors and the strap detail make your center marks put your strips of double-sided tape over the top of those lines and then we will fold these in now i'll only be doing my strap detail and my d-ring connectors because i haven't decided what color i want to use for my strap yet and my handles are done in webbing after you mark your handles, go ahead and set those aside for now because those are done just a tiny bit different than the rest. So just go ahead and remove your double-sided tape on any of the remaining pieces and fold into the center on both sides. And then on all of these pieces, we're gonna top stitch at an eighth of an inch. I put a small X on the wrong side of my D-ring connector to mark which side doesn't have the uh, interfacing. And then we'll just go ahead and top stitch this at the eighth of an inch like I said. I'm going to use a five and a half inch stitch length on my faux suede. Go ahead and do your handle the same way by folding in your raw edges to the center, then fold it once more so the raw edges are encased. And you're gonna top stitch those at 3 8 of an inch. After you top stitch at 3 8 of an inch, make your marks from the center, and then top stitch in between those two marks at your eighth of an inch. The rest of the eighth of an inch will be sewn on onto your panel. So grab your one handle and your main panel without the cutout. Go ahead and place the double sided tape on the back of your handle. Place your ruler centered uh, three inches on each side and we're going to lay our straps down. Same thing on the other side, make sure your strap isn't twisted. We're going to top stitch these on at an eighth of an inch. I'm still going to use my five and a half. Repeat on the other side. I am punching my holes and installing my rivets for the next step. And you'll notice how much extra rivet I have. So depending on your material and your rivet length, you might need to add a little piece of foam to the back, which is what I'm gonna do. My foam's just like a scrap. I didn't even measure it, just cut it out um, and punched a hole in it. I actually punched the hole first and then cut it out. So those will be better when I set them now. I've gone ahead and made the marks for my snap placement and I'm going to rip a hole and install the inner side of my magnet, the one that doesn't have the bump on the outside. 
Okay, I'm gonna be using a custom magnet on the front. So I'm gonna do mine just a little bit different, but my marking um, is still the same. So I'm gonna cut that marking out. I also went ahead and punched holes where my screws will go on just the lining piece. So then we're gonna go ahead and take our front pocket and put it with the front pocket lining, match up the top edges, and we're gonna sew across the top here. Go ahead and sew with a 3 8 of an inch, and I'm gonna use a three and a half stitch length. Make sure you've got the top edge of your directional fabric if you're using it on both sides. Okay, go ahead and trim just that lining side of the seam. Go ahead and add your strip of double-sided tape. Remove the backing. Flip over to the front and flatten the seam down. So when I turn it over, it should be nice and crisp over here. Go ahead and match the raw edges of your front pocket to your lining front pocket. They're gonna be wrong sides together. We can flatten this again and put some more clips down. Okay, we're gonna top stitch an eighth of an inch away from that seam we just made. Not that folded edge, but the seam we just made. Making sure everything is nice and smooth and flat, I'm gonna punch my holes through the exterior side. Now this is just for the custom magnet. Okay, so in case you haven't seen a custom magnet installed, I'm gonna grab the Audi side of my set of magnets. I'm going to grab the backing of my magnet and put the prongs into the magnet. Then using those marks I made previously, I will insert my magnet and I'll add my double or er, my Decaville light. Then we can open that up. Then you take the front side, match up your markings, and you'll screw your screws in. Okay, because of my magnet, I went ahead and installed my name tag at the top. We're gonna snap our magnet together. Ensure that it's straight. We're gonna have to line up the edges on the sides, which is gonna give it just a little bit of a gap. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. If you come from this way, you'll see there's a little bit of um, pocket gape. You want that. And then we can go base this on. I'll use a five and a half, just like my top stitch. Then go ahead and trim your corners to match your main panel. So this little cute thing is done right now and we are going to set it aside and repeat the steps to do the back panel. Okay, I got a little head of myself here and I put the front pocket on and then we'll do the phone pocket now. All right, because I missed putting the pocket on, I'm gonna try to clip my handle here out of the way. There we go. And then I'm gonna grab the pocket liner. It's the one with the notch cut out. And we'll line this up here. We'll sew around this curve all the way around. So we're gonna go around this little curve with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and we'll back stitch at the beginning and end. Okay, so go ahead and trim this down to an eighth of an inch. Fold this back. Get it all nice and straight and whatnot. And then we can clip this down and then we can top stitch. 
Okay, so we'll go ahead and use that 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and I'll use a five and a half stitch length. Go ahead and grab that pocket backing and line it up with your pocket, clip it, and we'll sew. Okay, so she actually has you cut an inch off after sewing. So I just went ahead and marked that already and I will just start and stop sewing there. So I've got it marked on not the right side, but so I put a clip there and I will start sewing from the exterior side. Okay, so then you'll just stay within that seam allowance and start at your one inch and trim that down. If you cut your stitching off, uh, go ahead and reinforce your stitching now. Okay, so this side is finished. Unless you didn't put your pocket on earlier like I did, then just repeat the steps from earlier. All right, now you'll need pattern pack four. Let's start with the small zippered pocket and your zipper tape with your smaller zipper pocket and your zipper tape right side up, both of them, we're going to clip this approximately centered onto our zipper pocket. Then we'll go base this on and then we'll pull this side over and do it to this. I'm just doing this to keep the zipper tape sturdy. Feel free to separate the zipper as instructed in the pattern. All right, go ahead and baste that on. Repeat for the other side. Okay, this is what I have currently. It's just a tube of fabric. We can go ahead and separate that zipper now and grab your bigger zipper pocket. Go ahead and lay the zipper pocket right side together with the zipper lining. Your zipper tape should go all the way edge to edge on that bigger zipper pocket lining. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna get this little bump in our fabric and that's totally okay. All right, let's go ahead and sew this. We're gonna use a 3 eighths of an inch seam. Repeat on the other side. Okay, this is what we have currently. We're gonna turn this right side out. On one side of your zipper pocket, we need to press the two layers right sides together and we're gonna to top stitch. This will be the lower front of the pocket. So if you're using directional fabric like I am, you wanna to top stitch on your top part of your fabric the correct way. So this side right here, we're gonna top stitch across. Since this is cotton woven, I'll be using a five stitch length. Okay, so this is what we have right now, a nice and flat top area and a little bit of a bump with our zipper kind of hiding underneath. Go ahead and flip to the back side and what I do to make this easier is press underneath that zipper and then we're gonna press on top of that zipper. So that zipper is wrapped around, or that bottom of your fabric rather, is wrapped around the inside seam of your zipper. I hope that makes sense. So we're gonna pretty much be top stitching this to the inside of our fabric. Don't worry, it's okay. We'll top stitch at an eighth of an inch from the zipper and then an eighth of an inch from the folded edge. Okay, so this is what we have. Here's that folded edge. In retrospect, this inside piece probably should have been flipped because now my directional fabric is gonna be upside down. So we're gonna take this uh, first side of the zipper that we top stitched and we're going to bring it to the top of the zipper and you want to get it pushed up there as close to possible. So I like to just kind of push those zipper teeth together kind of 
and then we will press this. Now that it's turned wrong side out, go ahead and get those teeth pressed back together as close as you can, just to ensure that you've got it doing the right thing. Flip that, this will be the exterior side, out of the way, so you're only working with that shorter zipper pocket and we're gonna stitch right down these edges. I'm gonna start in that little flap right here on both sides. Okay, go ahead and turn that pocket right side out and add your zipper pull and grab the main lining and your two side panels. Go ahead and clip your pocket on as indicated in the pattern and then we'll base this down and around, not across the top. I like to just use a five and a half, just like my top stitch length for things like this. All right, go ahead and grab those side panels now and lay them on their respective sides. So you should have two mirror images with the curves pointing inside to your zipper pocket. Then we'll go ahead and stitch this on with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then flip these open and we're gonna top stitch down that seam. Go ahead and grab your slip pocket, fold it the short sides, right sides together, and we're gonna sew across the top. Trim that top edge, turn it right side out. And then she says to put that seam on the bottom towards the back. So just go ahead and get that seam back there. Go ahead and press it. We'll top stitch across the top. Just like with the zipper pocket, we'll lay this on as indicated in the pattern. We're gonna go ahead and baste all around the three sides. We'll lay our side panels with the curved edges going towards the inside. We'll stitch, open them back up, and top stitch. I misread the directions, and you are supposed to trim after top stitching. So go ahead and trim that down now. Don't cut your fabric that you've pulled out of the way. All right, trim down. Grab all four of your main panel pieces and the lining pieces, so there's four all together. Decide which side you want uh, your zipper pocket on. I like to always have my zipper pocket uh, accessible as soon as you open the bag. So I like to put it on the back side, on the back panel. The lining panel might be a little bit bigger than your exterior panel, that's okay. We'll just trim it down later. So just line these up, clip them together, and then we'll base these all the way around. Since those lining panels are a little bit larger, I want to use my exterior panel as my guide. So I'll top, I'll baste around with the exterior looking up at me. Go ahead and get your 16 inch zipper and your zipper tabs. Get your two zipper pulls on there if you don't have them on there already. Put an exterior tab right side together with your right side of your zipper tape. Repeat with the lining tabs and we'll go sew this on. Then she wants you to trim just the exterior side of your zipper tab. Then you can fold them out and top stitch. Okay, I don't really trust myself with this long of a zipper and clips, so I put some double-sided tape on the top side of my lining on the right side and I'm gonna stick my zipper on top of it so the zipper teeth are facing up at me 
grab an exterior, lay it right sides together, and then we'll sew this together. I'm going to sew from the lining side a three and a half stitch length and three eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you look closely in here, you can see my zipper tape it starts right there. So we're gonna trim from right there down to this corner. Don't cut your zipper tape. Then you can go ahead and fold these wrong sides together and we can top stitch. Now we'll repeat this process on the other side. This step is a little bit different. You're going to use the marked side and put it, the D-ring connector, onto the zipper panel, right sides together. And then we're gonna base this on. So again, you're gonna be able to see the raw edges. You wanna use your marked side, however you marked that. So the side without the Decaville light all the way to the end match up your ends and we're going to base that on just like that with it right sides together you're looking at the wrong side okay i went ahead and added my purse feet you can skip this step if you want but i always put purse feet on my purses i use screw back ones instead of prongs because the prongs always fell out for me Depending on your materials, you might need some scrap pieces of foam right there. Okay, so now you can take your gusset and put it right sides together with your zipper panel. Your zipper panel is supposed to be just a little bit shorter. We'll clip it together. Then we'll grab our lining of our gusset and put it right sides together with the lining side of the gusset and we're going to stitch all these layers together. Just like we did for the zipper tabs, we're going to trim the exterior side of the gusset only. Then we can trim the corners through all the layers. And fold those right wrong sides together and we will top stitch across that seam we just made. We'll just go ahead and repeat this on the other side by bringing the exterior over to the exterior side and clipping it together. Make sure you only grab that exterior side, then grab that lining and bring it right sides together with the lining side of the zipper panel. Then we can stitch those together and top stitch and trim like we were. Okay, there's our finished gusset. Then we'll grab our strap details, find the center and make a mark in the center, like so. And we'll also punch a hole. Okay, my holes are punched. Grab your D-rings and slide them on with the bottom going on the inside of your D-ring connector. Okay, so slide that D-ring connector on. Okay, then we're gonna fold it over to where the back side of the tab is only about 7 eighths of an inch long. So this underside is 7 eighths of an inch long. This side is different. I'll put a clip on there. I'll do the same thing on the other one. Okay, so we're gonna punch a hole through all layers of the D-ring tab and the zipper tab. So all the way through to here. Make sure it's above, it's in the center of your seam and below your D-ring connector. Okay, there's my hole. And then we can install this rivet and set it. Then from down here, we're gonna measure up a quarter inch and center it. Punch a hole through only the flat part. 
Okay, after that hole is punched, we're gonna go ahead and take a pen or marker of some sort and mark where that goes on the exterior side. Then we're gonna punch a hole only through the exterior right there. Then you can install your other rivet. Okay, now that both of those strap details are riveted in place, we can baste around this entire gusset. Make sure you keep your little arms out of the way. Let's find the centers by matching up those two seams where the gusset meets the zipper panel. And we can, I'm gonna make a little V-clip. You can make a snip, whatever you're comfortable with. Do the same thing on the other end and with the opposite side. And then match those top and bottom clip marks so you can find the quarter mark on the sides. Then we're gonna do pretty much the same thing with the pan main panels. Go ahead and fold it in half to find your center marks. Mark those, fold it in half the other way, and you've got your quarter marks. All right, I always like to start with my front side. So we're gonna match up our center markings right sides together, and we're gonna clip these in place. Here we go. If you've watched my videos before, you know I like to put three clips down. I'll do the center clip all the way across until it stops being straight where it starts curving around that edge right here on this side. And then I'll go down to the bottom and I'll do the same thing. We'll go to the side now. And again, I'll throw three clips on. I'll go do the other side. So I've switched to the lining side. I'm going to curve my panel into my gusset. And this is where I'll staple it in. And then we'll just keep doing this all the way around. Okay, with my main panel facing up at me, I am gonna base this on with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I am also gonna use a four and a half to do this. You can reach your hand into your bag, like I am here and help curve this around even with your staples on now i'm gonna like i can't sew straight anymore and it's getting kind of, almost kind of wonky i'm gonna lift this top corner and push it and round my corner that in hand that's inside the bag so like pull this and push down here to maintain that round curve You'll notice I only did about two stitches and then readjusted. Okay, that took me about five minutes to sew. You don't have to go fast. You definitely wanna take your time so everything's nice and round. Check in there to make sure it's round. Check to make sure you caught all your seams. You didn't catch any of your arms or your handles or anything like that um, trim any edges that are maybe a little off i've got just a little bit here we'll grab a strip of bias tape and we'll head to the machine i'm gonna try this like alexis suggests in the pattern i'm gonna start by unfolding one side of my uh, double-sided tape 
and folding it over about an inch. I'm gonna find the center of my bottom part of my bag. I'm gonna have my gusset facing up at me and I will lay this bias tape on my bag, right side to right side, raw edges together. Then we're gonna baste this on. I'll just go ahead and use that four and a half stitch length. And we are not clipping this on first. I'm a little nervous. Here we go. here so I'm going to trim off a bit of this extra and we'll finish basting. So we will take this bias tape and flip it over around our seam and fold it over and clip it in place. We're going to sew this on with the main panel facing up now. I'm going to use a three and a half because I don't trust my machine and these materials at a smaller stitch length. I personally probably never tried it, but this is what I'm doing. We're going to use a three eighths of an inch seam allowance and let's get to it. to say this is by far the best binding I have ever done and I've not even turned it over to check out the other side. I'm pretty excited about this. Of course Alexis was right, her beautiful mind. All right so this is what it looks like so far. Someone remind me to put a hang tag in there next time. Oh it's wonderful. It's so great. Look at that. Oh I don't know that you can see that but it's wonderful. You see the curves in there? They're looking nice. So we're gonna repeat this with the other side. Okay, let's turn it right side out. Let's push out all your curves. I run my hand right inside the binding. See my fingers moving in there? Keeping the handle flat and straight, you're going to punch a hole above your 6 inch marking you made earlier and install a rivet on each handle. Okay, my rivets have been installed and now I have my double sided tape on. I am going to take the backing off and fold it to the inside and leaving a little gap next to that D-ring connector and pressing that on itself. I'm gonna do that for all four sides. Now that those are all folded in, I will punch a hole a quarter inch away from each edge. Now that my hole is punched, I'm going to wrap this around to the front. I'm gonna make a mark on my pocket once I'm sure this is level, and then we'll repeat all the way around. Now before you get wild here, remember we're only punching through the pocket. Just the pocket, then install your rivets. Okay, so you just need to add your strap and your bag is done. I hope you had fun sewing with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.